Right then, lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into a couple of stories around Arsenal. There is a busy January incoming, according to Fabrizio Romano. He has been talking to Coach Offside and he said, with Arsenal, it's going to be busy, busy, busy January. So probably uh, Arsenal fans should be excited. Fabrizio also says Arsenal are interested in Serge Milinkovic Savic, but there were no talks in the summer. So probably uh, right now that his contract is, ha has one year and, and six months, Arsenal could be in for a good treat. We'll be, we'll be talking about the Danilo deal, Mikhail Modric, Saka, on his interest to stay. He says, I want to stay at Arsenal. I've always loved Arsenal. I've always felt like home when I'm at Arsenal. So I will be staying. And looks like Arsenal will not be signing Hendrik. He might be going to Chelsea, Madrid, or Paris Saint-Germain. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe to the podcast as well. Many of these stories have actually been uh, running around throughout the day. If you've seen them, I'm going to be providing my reaction. If you've not, sit down. Let's have a conversation. You know, my question here, guys, is... um. Apart from the number of players we want in January, because I think uh, many of us really want around three, um, you know, signings. How many players do you think Arsenal should get rid of in January? The, with the likes of Cedric Suarez uh, looking likely to live in January, with the likes of Albert Sambila Conga looking likely to live in January. How many players do we need to get rid of? Because last campaign we let go of the likes of Ainsley Matlan Niles. And it eventually affected us in terms of squad depth. So talk to me in the comment section. Do we need to trim the squad in January or just add more players? And then the trimming can be done in the summer. Now, to start off, Fabrizio Romano has been talking to um, the Coat Offside podcast. I don't know if you people really love the podcast. Now, the podcast format of Coat Offside is actually the better version. And the written version is the worst version in the world. I think the, I think. They're worse than the sun. But Fabrizio has been talking to uh, the Coat Offside podcast. He's always there a lot of the time. And he said Arsenal are going to be having a very busy January. They do want a winger, but he's, uh, you know, he says a, um, a midfielder could be the priority. And that is what I was talking about uh, yesterday, that what are our priority areas? Probably if you did uh, you know, a problem analysis at the club right now, what is our major problem is it adding someone to the forward uh, forward line uh, and if then if you're adding someone to the forward line is it a winger is it a number nine are we struggling to to to, to score goals are we struggling to create chances or actually is our problem really deep down in the midfield when we lose thomas Partey, when we lose uh players like martin odegaard when we lose players like granny jacka do we need someone quality in those positions so fabrizio says a midfielder is going to be a priority for them. Now, we said Mikhail Modric is a priority la the last time. So don't say I'm contradicting myself. I'm actually not. Uh, but today, talking to Coach of Side, he says they're going to be busy. And a midfielder could be one of the priorities. And I got no problem with that, uh, problems with that. If Arsenal do want to bring in a, a midfielder, I'm okay with that. The likes of Danilo, the likes of Sad Milinkov Savic, the likes of, um, you know, uh, whether it's Jude Bellingham or, or Declan Rice. At this point in time, I do not care. I want Arsenal to win that title. I want us to be uh, on top of the table for the rest of the league. So I don't care how we do it. I just want us to be there. So um, in terms of midfielders, we've already talked about uh, who Arsenal are looking at. But R Romano, again, today, speaking to Coach Offside, has said Arsenal are still interested in Saj Milinkovic-Savic. And he said in the summer, there were a few rumors around this guy uh, with Arsenal, but they're not so strong. There were no negotiations between the players, agents, and Arsenal. And there were also no negotiations between Lazio and Arsenal for their captain, Saj milinkovic Savic. But of course, um, we know Arsenal do want to jump onto those opportunities where uh, players' contracts are running down and then you can get him on a bargain and things like that. So Romano says this is one to uh, watch. This is one for us to wait and see where it's going to end. Although the interest was not that strong in the summer, they would actually want to sign him either in January or in the summer. Romano also says he doesn't see Serge Milinkovic Savic move. Clubs like Juventus, clubs like Arsenal, clubs like Man United are still interested in the Serbian maestro. For me, one of the best box-to-box uh, -box players um, in, 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 in the Italian Serie A. Many of you don't watch the Italian Serie A, but I do. And one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders at the World Cup right now, 
I want to say in the world, but this is going to be this, this is going to be very very controversial, isn't it? Let's leave the competition. If you've watched Saj Milinkov Savic, he's a beast, man. He's a he's, he's an absolute beast of a midfield. So as uh, Romano says, the interest is there. Last summer, no, um, no negotiations, but. His contract is running down. There is a high possibility that any club will actually get him on a bargain. And why not? In my opinion, if, if we can get such a talent on a bargain, you know, you know, their the, the decisions, if I were an Arsenal uh, manager, that I wouldn't think twice about. Signing a player like Saj Milikov Savic on a bargain, those are things I would do automatically so let's wait and see what comes out of that now today we've had a second round of talks between the agent of danilo and arsenal representatives it is still going on very very well we are progressing and we are moving closer and closer to signing danilo however guys i want to say this there is no argument between us and Palmarius. Talks are ongoing, uh, according to very authentic sources, ESPN, um, James Oli, and a couple of others. We are also in direct contact with the player's representatives right now. The player is on, is, is on holiday um, and is expected to be coming back, uh, doing a few tra uh, trainings and all that. But currently, uh, the deal is in Arsenal. Sans this is one where I can confirm... This still is uh, is Arsenal's to lose. If we want to sign him, definitely we will sign him. Now there is some new information also on the table. First and foremost, Palmarius have told Arsenal you will have to pay twenty five million euros to us, and then you have to negotiate another part of the deal with Kajazeros. That means the deal could be driven up to thirty million euros. Arsenal still hopeful that um they will pay a bargain for Danilo and um. Palmeiras have also told us this money must be paid once. So uh, it's, it's not there are no installments that are going to be allowed in this deal. The money has to be uh, paid in one installment um, or cash down. Arsenal want to pay the 20 million euros they're offering Palmeiras for Danilo across two seasons. Now, I think that won't work. Honestly, I think that won't work. And this, this is my reason. This is a deal where... You have two, uh, you know, you have two rights owners. You have Cajazeros who own twenty percent, and then uh, you have Palmarius who own eighty uh, percent. So if you're gonna give them a, a bargain like twenty million euros, that money needs to be readily available. If you're gonna if you're gonna beat the competition, because I'm very sure Borussia Dortmund or Ajax or Monaco or AC Milan or Athletic Madrid, one of those clubs is able to pay around fifteen million euros uh, cash. And then 5 million euros in the summer. If you want to beat such competition, if you want to be on top of the game uh, in the negotiation market, small prices, you must be able to pay at instant. And then, you know, you can easily spread out the, you know, spread out the long, you know, these big payments across a, you know, a big period of time. So Romano today has confirmed that Arsenal is still interested. He says he cannot confirm that uh, th th there is contact with Palmarius. We got that from ESPN. So, uh, like I said, Romano is not the best journalist in, in South America. Romano is not the best journalist in, um, uh, in, in Asia. He's just the best journalist, transfer journalist in Europe, right? So, um, uh, Romano says right now he cannot confirm the talks between Palmarius and Arsenal. But he knows... He's one of the players they're actually looking at. And he can confirm also that there is a very good relationship between the agents of the player and Arsenal Football Club. Of course, that means Edu, uh, the Brazilian connection, uh, and all that. So it's a deal where Arsenal can count themselves as favorites. It's a deal where Arsenal can count themselves as, you know, uh, top players in the driving seat. It is ours to lose. And for me, it's a no-brainer. At 22 years of age, one of the best talents in the Brazilian market right now. You have Fabio Vieira. You have um, you get players like Danilo, Albert Sambile, Conga, Saka, Martinelli. You're securing the future within the future, and that is what Arsenal are actually all about right now. Now, a, a few reports coming out from Ukraine are also indicating that Arsenal could actually initiate talks with, um, with Ukrainian side Shakhtar Donetsk for Mikhailo Modric very very soon. Now, I think. Listen, I'm going to give you two versions here. One, the one of Fabrizio Romano, which confirms that um, there, there are no talks for Mikhailo Modric, but Arsenal are also, uh, you know, but he expects Arsenal to make a move, a formal move for the player very, very soon. And 
the other perspective is my own. I think everyone is trying to milk so much the deal for Mikhail Modric. Everyone wants to have a say. Everyone wants to um, write about it because I think it's the most clickable uh, thing right now, apart from the Ronaldo saga and the boring World Cup at Qatar without goals. To be honest, we need some goals. Zero zeros are becoming zero zeros, one ones, one nails, and all that. But look, listen. Uh, I don't think this is a huge step in terms of where we want to be, uh, that Arsenal are going to initiate talks very soon with Mikhailo Modric. And actually, I think this story will make more sense when I come here and say Arsenal have initiated talks with Mikhailo Modric or his agents uh, or Shakhtar Donetsk. But anyway, we are hopeful. We will be talking to Shakhtar um, in January. Unless, otherwise, um, negotiations will actually be underway and we'll see if we are going to be uh, signing. Remember, if we don't sign him, a few of the other options we are looking at, Marcus Thuram, as confirmed by Graham Bailey, Borussia Mönchengladbach are going to be selling in January. 10 million euros is what they are looking at. So let's wait and see if uh, we don't get Mikhail Modric. Can we easily turn our attention to players like uh, Marcus Thuram? Facundo Torres is, an, is another player. Now, um, uh, I've not seen that. Euro, uh, I've not watched that Uruguayan game. Uh, had a few commitments, but I, I think, you know, I would take Facundo Torres if uh, Mikhail Modric actually uh, fails to join us. But anyway, uh, let's wait and uh, let's wait and see. Um, a very interesting update around Bukayo Saka uh, is, well, of course, with England with the, uh, uh, during the World Cup. Was asked a few questions about if he wants to stay uh, at Arsenal and whether he feels he will stay at the club. Um, and his answer was, I want to stay at the club. And regardless of what's going to happen, I feel at home at Arsenal Football Club. Now, I'm one person who really loves deep, digging deeper. And um, I, I, I want to do a compilation of what is going on with the Bukayo Saka contract. Reports are claiming that we want to make him the highest paid player at the club. Reports are also indicating that we want to give him over 200000 uh per week. That is money anyone, every player in the world is going to take. I, I don't understand what is you know, taking so long. But Saka says he wants to stay. I think it's more of a, uh, of a confirmation and, and, and reaffirmation to the Arsenal fans. Don't worry. Don't panic. Bukai Saka is not actually going anywhere. And in case he leaves it will be more of a shocker, right? It will be more of a very, very big shocker. So um, I've not seen more in, much interest in him. And actually, the player I'm, I'm, I'm worried about is Saliba and Gabriel Martinelli. Because with Martinelli, um, you have, he can play anywhere. He, you know, he's not limited by the English boundaries. With William Saliba as well, he can play anywhere for any international side. He's not limited by the English boundaries as well. So uh, if, if you're going to be, if, if you're going to be uh, you know, signing them on new deals we actually need to do it as quickly as possible and finally Arsenal will not be say, uh, signing Felipe Hendrik one of the most interesting Brazilian talents as well now Hendrik as opposed to Danilo is an attacking player uh, only 15 and everyone thinks he's the next big thing in international football PSG Real Madrid Chelsea are leading the rest for, on that one. Arsenal were there. They tried to probably, um, you know, uh, send in a shout, one or two. But it looks like the player is actually focused on one of these very, very big deals. Now, look, I, I, I know Hendricks could be a big deal right now. But I think our focus should not be on signing these 15-year-olds, honestly. I think if a player doesn't have an immediate impact to what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve... Leave them out. Yeah, leave the deal out. A January should be about two or one quality signing. A player that adds massive, massive, like, I, I've just said that two times. And the third time, massive quality to the side. For me, Hendrik is good for the under-17s, for the under-19s, for the under-21s probably, if uh, he's so exceptional. Is very good for the under uh, under 19s, and we have a couple of interesting players, by the way, the likes of Charlie Patino, you know, attracting interest from Barcelona. So you can easily see that Arsenal do have this kind of talent, and what we are lacking is not Hendrik. Uh, it's not it's not that we are lacking experience, we are lacking 
ambition. We are lacking a killer. We are lacking a big squad. That is what we are lacking. And not a big squad of 18-year-olds, 15-year-olds. We are lacking a squad with competence and a squad with experience. So with that, guys, um, I think Enric going to PSG, I could care less. Honestly, I mean, I could care less. PSG leading that race, probably if he doesn't go Chelsea, I'll be celebrating a little bit. I don't, I don't want him to go to Madrid because um, he'll be troubling Barcelona in a few years. So let him go to PSG and probably if he fails, then um, he could lead a career just like Martin Odegaard. So that is all from me um, in this one. We will have a busy uh, January, uh, January, according to Romano, on coat offside. And Saj Milinkovic-Savic is back in the topics. Do you think Arsenal should actually try to go for this guy? Um, in January. I mean, I got no problems with him. He's a very, very good player, but, you know, he's one of those players that have a lot of controversy with um, their deals, and I really doubt he will ever leave Lazio if it is not on a free deal. I think Lazio are too afraid to lose him. Too afraid. 